In today's video, we're going to talk about salicylates, which are a class of aroma chemicals used in perfumery. So in this video, I'm going to explain a bit about what salicylates are, and then I'm going to talk about the three which I have, which are methyl salicylate, amyl salicylate, and benzyl salicylate. Firstly then, what are the salicylates? Well, the salicylates are a group of raw materials, but not exactly grouped purely in the same sense that green or woody or floral is grouped based on the way they smell or where they come from. The salicylates are a bit more similar to the acetates in the sense that they're grouped due to a kind of shared chemical functionality, or what we'd call in chemistry a shared functional group, in this case, the salicylate functional group. So the salicylate functional group is just this certain group of atoms which could go on your molecule, and if that group of atoms is existing on your molecule, then you can call it a salicylate. So in the picture of the salicylate above, you can see that that X on the picture, that represents any different ending or any other molecule you could put on the end of that. But as long as it's got the rest of the picture, the rest of the molecule that's actually shown there, that makes that molecule a salicylate. So naturally that means you can have lots of different molecules that are something salicylate. Now, a lot of different salicylates are used in perfumery, though the three I've got here, which are the only three I have, are the three which came in Pearl Wall's first 100 raw materials starter kit, and I have good reason to believe that these three are three of the most common salicylates. I also checked Jean-Claude Elena's book, Perfume, The Alchemy of Scent. I did a video reviewing that, so if you haven't already seen that, then check out that video. It's a really good book. But in that book, it basically said that in his raw materials palette, Jean-Claude Elena only actually has benzyl salicylate, which is one of the ones here, and cis hexanyl salicylate, which I don't have, but that one sounds quite interesting because it's basically cis hexanyl, that grassy green smelling molecule, with a salicylate group on the end of it. So maybe one time I'll get that and see what it smells like. Anyway, now we're talking about benzyl salicylate, let's uh, explore that a bit more. So I've got that right here. Now, the other interesting thing in that book about benzyl salicylate is that Jean-Claude Elena says this is a key component of exotic or spicy floral accords. So he groups the floral raw materials essentially into four different categories. And one of those categories is this kind of exotic florals, things like ilong ilong and carnation. And he says, the kind of key accord for these florals, the key thing that differentiates them from the other florals, is the combination of benzyl salicylate and eugenol. So this is definitely something I will try to explore in a future video, um, but just for now, know that that is actually quite interesting. So let's go and smell the benzyl salicylate. Now, the one thing about the benzyl salicylate compared to the other two is I really noticed that it is very, very subtle and quite faint though you can definitely smell it. Actually, the first time I tried to smell this, I really didn't smell much at all, but now I understand what the other salicylates smell like. I've actually been able to kind of gain an understanding for where kind of in the olfactory space I had to look for the benzyl salicylate, and then now I can kind of detect it. So if you're having trouble smelling this, I would try smelling something like the amyl salicylate first, and then you've got a much better reference of kind of where roughly you're trying to actually smell for. Anyway, the benzyl salicylate, to me, I got a bit of actually kind of a herbal, almost a juniper note, though it's quite subtle. I also got a bit of a musky note, and it also reminds me just kind of slightly of this sun cream note, which is a general note I seem to find across the salicylates. Now, when I read a bit more about the benzyl salicylate, what I found was indeed, apparently it is uh, commonly regarded as quite a subtle thing. And apparently what it's mainly used as is a blender for floral perfumes. So apparently you might put this in something like a rose or a violet perfume, and then you would actually add some benzyl salicylate to kind of make it pop. Now, again, I haven't tried this yet, but hopefully in some other video, I will actually go and try that out. So stay tuned for that. Okay then, so next let's talk a bit about amyl salicylate. Now this one's quite interesting because it was discovered by George Darzens. Now this guy was working for a perfume house in Paris called LT Pivot, and this was actually the very first perfume house in Paris. He was basically hired as a laboratory manager and also a perfumer, and this was the first aroma chemical that he discovered. Apparently, once he discovered it, he described it as a blossoming clover field in the warmth of August. So once they'd discovered this aroma chemical, what they went and did was they put it in a perfume 
called Trèfle Incarnat. The key idea for this perfume was basically to take a fougère or a fern accord and mix it with this new amyl salicylate. Apparently the results were so successful that this became so so popular that since then uh, amyl salicylate has apparently been used in almost all fougère accords or at least a really big proportion of them. So this is definitely something worth considering if you're thinking about making a fougère accord, definitely bear the amyl salicylate in mind. Now one thing to note about amyl salicylate is people often seem to get confused on the naming. And part of the reason for that seems to be because people actually use the name amyl salicylate and isoamyl salicylate quite interchangeably. In reality, from a chemistry point of view, these two molecules are extremely similar, but they just differ by the position of one methyl group in the carbon chain on the tail. But they still are technically different molecules. Apparently they do smell very similar, which is probably why they get confused so often. But a lot of places will be selling isoamyl salicylate and call it amyl salicylate or vice versa. For example, Pell Wool, where I buy from, seems to be selling amyl salicylate, but they give isoamyl salicylate as a synonym for it. On the other hand, one of the perfumery books I look at actually have a monograph for isoamyl salicylate. A monograph is just kind of the page that gives description about that raw material. And then that one lists amyl salicylate as its common name or its synonym, but it doesn't actually make any reference in that book to the completely straight chain amyl salicylate. This is a pretty small point which you probably don't need to worry about. It's just, I think, useful to be aware that technically there's two different things which people are often using interchangeably, just in case that's something that you ever kind of are interested in or that you happen to pick up on. Anyway, what does it actually smell like? So to me, it's definitely got that kind of sun cream or salicylate aspect, a bit like the benzyl salicylate. Um, that's kind of a distinctive aspect that seems to be shared to me across all of the salicylates. It also does remind me actually a bit of a certain shampoo I once used when I was in holiday in Croatia. I think that was actually a fougere shampoo, so I'm really not surprised given that that shampoo probably did have a lot of this inside it. It also does remind me slightly of a kind of a herbal and a kind of floral direction, though very subtly, not too strongly. And if I had to pin it down a bit further, I might say that it's more leaning towards like a violet or iris kind of scent. Um, though again this is quite subtle. It also does remind me a bit of musks in particular, kind of uh, like ironing or more powdery musks, so something maybe a bit like Velvione. Um, though it doesn't smell like Velvione, it just has this kind of hint which uh, makes me think of Velvione just a little bit. Now the one time that I actually used this in a blend was when I did my previous YouTube video on the Sheepra number no. 7 formula which I found on the internet, and in that formula it was basically a mixture of things like ironones and cedar wood. So it did have this kind of violety, uh, woody kind of smell, but it definitely had enough of this salicylate to be quite a prominent component of that smell. Now in that uh, perfume or that formula, the I did everything to 10% and I'm not sure what uh, level that the perfume was actually meant to be made of. So maybe it could have been a bit weaker or could have been a bit stronger. But either way, 10% is quite a reasonable level for a perfume. And in that perfume at 10%, the net concentration of this, or the absolute concentration, ended up being around 2%. So the reason I'm saying this is basically just because if you're interested in using that in one of your formulas, maybe having it at somewhere like 2% could be a good place to start if you're completely unsure of how strong to use it. Again, in that formula, it was quite dominant. So I would say maybe something like 2% or less is probably where you wanna start looking as a level for this kind of thing. Now, finally, I wanna talk about methyl salicylate, which is the last one I have here. So I'm gonna preface this one by actually making a note on the safety of it. And the reason for that is because this thing actually acts as an analgesic at high concentrations. So basically, if you accidentally get some of this onto your skin, it might actually go numb. The other thing about this is it's also toxic to ingest. So if you have something like as little as even 10 grams of it, so a few, a couple of teaspoons, that could actually be enough to kill you. So you've got to be really, really careful with this stuff, uh, not to kind of ingest it and to be very, very careful not to touch it in its pure form. That said, you may then go and ask, well, why are we actually using this in perfumes if it's dangerous? Well, a lot of uh, things that you might use in perfumery could be dangerous at a very high concentration, yet at the concentration that they're actually used in perfumery, they are completely safe. Also bearing in mind the fact that you're not uh, ingesting perfumes, you've only got them on your skin. 
the other thing about this is uh, this is actually used in flavoring for chewing gum. So it's not just perfumery that this is used in, it's actually there in food flavorings as well. So this thing, methyl salicylate, part of the reason that you could see it as something to be very careful of is that this actually in your body gets metabolized to salicylate acid. And when you go and acylate that, which is another chemical reaction, you then get aspirin, which is the painkiller. So as you can see, this thing is essentially kind of a medicine and with a lot of medicines, it's something that in a certain dose, it can be something that's very good for you. And in a big dose, it can be something that's potentially deadly and may be able to kill you. So all I'm kind of trying to say here is just be very, very careful, especially with the methyl salicylate. Now, this methyl salicylate is actually found all over the place in nature. So a lot of natural products, a lot of things like essential oils contain this. Things like wintergreen oil and birch bark oil have this as a major constituent. This also actually kind of, as a side note, goes on to show why these things, so like wintergreen and birch, were probably used back in the ancient days as kind of like herbal remedies because they did actually contain these compounds inside of them. But it's also contained in a lot of other things. So even lavender essential oil does have a little bit of methyl salicylate. This is another reason that I always like to kind of uh, explain to people that naturals aren't necessarily as safe as you think just because they say natural on them. They can actually contain a lot of things which are potentially dangerous like this methyl salicylate. Anyway, this methyl salicylate that I've got here is diluted down to 1% at which level it should be fairly safe. That said, I've not actually used this yet in a perfume. I haven't really found a good use for it. The reason for that is the way it smells to me um, is something that I think you definitely could use, I'm sure, but I'm not quite sure myself yet how to go and use it. So to me, when you first put this on the scent strip, what it smells like is a little bit camphoraceous. It's kind of got that tiger balm smell a little bit. It's got that kind of medicinal, uh, slightly phenolic smell. And it's also a little bit minty, that kind of thing. It does also share this kind of salicylate smell that's common with the other two to some degree. Now that this has been on the scent strip a little bit longer, so say another 15 minutes or so, this actually goes on to smell a bit more creamy and this kind of slightly woody, a little bit herbal aspect of it comes out. It still retains that kind of salicylate smell that I had before and a bit of that mintiness. It actually reminds me very slightly of the amyl salicylate as well, which does make sense given that they are quite similar molecules. It's just the uh, amyl salicylate has a bit of a longer carbon chain on it. Anyway, this thing is also much more of a top note than the other two. This one only lasts a few hours on the scent strip for me, whereas the other two seem to last at least a day. So this one I would definitely say is a top note, whereas the other two are somewhere in the region of mid to base notes. Anyway, this one I didn't actually find that much about how it's used in perfumery, so I can't really give you a lot of information on that unfortunately, but I just thought I'd mention it to make you aware of it. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on salicylates for now. Uh, this isn't a class of aroma chemicals that I'm really that familiar with, but uh, part of the reason that I'm actually looking at them now is in an attempt to kind of learn them a bit better. What I hope to do as part of that in the next video is actually go and try to blend them. Uh, specifically, I think it'd be interesting to take the benzyl salicylate and then go and blend that with the eugenol, like John claude Elena suggested, to go and try to make those uh, spicy or exotic uh, floral accords. I also think it could be interesting to see what I could do with the amyl salicylate. The methyl salicylate, I'm not too sure yet, but I'll go and have a think about it and then hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, definitely check out my web store where you can find some supplies for perfumery and also check out my app formula, which is what I use for writing down all of my formulas and also for storing all of my notes about the raw materials. Until then, have a great week and see you next time.